There was a time where I was really into shopping and if I like something, I'll just buy it. Needless to say, I was spending way more than I should and I was also working really hard to sustain my shopping habits. It wasn't until years later that I realized if I was just a bit more intentional, I could have a timeless wardrobe without sacrificing my financial future. And so with every potential purchase, I started asking myself if the item is worth my money. And here is my thought process whenever I'm tempted to buy anything. The first one is, do I have the money for it? Because the way I see it, if you have to put an item on your credit card and then pay monthly, then the item is hardly worth buying, especially if you're talking about discretionary items like another pair of high heels or another the designer bag. It goes without saying, credit cards have the highest interest rates. That's just how the banks make money. And we're talking about 20% or higher. Here's the thing, I enjoy dressing well and having a timeless wardrobe, but I can't think of anything in my wardrobe that is worth paying that kind of interest for. So I'll suggest to set aside money for shopping. But if you're ever interested in anything that goes over your budget, delay the purchase and buy it when you're financially ready. That way, you will also enjoy your purchase so much more. If you are in a high paying job, you might be fortunate enough to afford a designer bag every other month. Now, I used to think as long as I was able to clear my credit card bills every month, it meant I was doing the right thing. But if I could turn back time, I'll tell my younger self to learn more about opportunity costs. Quite simply, when I spend thousands of dollars on a designer bag, it basically means I'm saying no to my other options and opportunities. And these other options could be investment for the future, education, travel, healthcare, and so on and so forth. So let's say if you buy a Chanel classic flap today, we are talking about a substantial amount of money that could also pay for a lovely holiday for your family. Maybe your braces, your tax-free investment, and many online classes. To others, it might be the down payment for a new car or the capital for a new business that could be very successful in the future. I mean, there are so many possibilities. For me at least, when I allow myself to explore all these other options, it filters out a lot of the unnecessary spending. And I believe our priorities will look different depending on the stages of life we are at. For example, I used to pay a lot of money for education when I was new to my profession. Then in the last five years or so, we really focused on investing because we wanted to plan for our future and I was also hoping to have a break from my day job. But now that we are where we are, we really prioritize on traveling and creating memories as a family. I used to have so much fear of missing out with shopping. For example, if I was a bit indecisive about a Chanel handbag, the sale associate just had to tell me that it was the last one in the country and I'll buy it. Whereas now, I'm not as easily swayed because I'm a lot more grounded in my reality. Sometimes I might choose to buy something instead of investing, but at least I know I've assessed my situation and the purchase is intentional. Another really important thing to do if you want to see if something is worth buying is to see if this item ever goes on sale. Now certain luxury brands never go on sale, for example Louis Vuitton. Meanwhile, other brands like Prada, Burberry and so on do occasionally offer discounts but they might exclude their classic collections from the sale. I personally like to keep track of my wishlist items and if I notice an item had gone on sale in the past, I'll have a hard time buying it at full price. I think shoes are a very good example. I enjoy designer shoes because they are well made and long lasting. But whenever possible, I try to avoid paying full price. And I have many reasons to do that. First of all, shoes are very personal items and they are also size dependent. Besides, you only have to wear your shoes once and they will immediately show wear and tear. So typically, the resale value for shoes is very poor. So to avoid paying full price, I like to buy my shoes around the holiday seasons like Black Friday and Boxing Day. 
and I must say I have come across some really amazing sales. I got my Acne Studio Boots and Roger Vivia Flats at about 30% off years ago and they remain my all-time favorite. That brings me to designer outlet shopping because it is often advertised as a way to save on shopping. Now it is true that things are usually cheaper in outlet stores but the problem is availability is unpredictable because you don't know what they have until you're there. And when everything is 20 or 30% off, it can make you feel like everything is worth buying. But from my personal experience, it's never a good idea to buy something just to save. I don't do outlet shopping anymore, but if you do, you want to make sure you go there with a wish list. Something else I want to mention about outlet shopping is that the last time I went to the Gucci store in the Bista village, which is an outlet shopping village in the UK, I did come across certain designs that were not available on the Gucci website. So I looked into it and it looks like there's a speculation saying brands like Prada and Gucci do offer certain designs that are limited to their outlet stores. And typically these pieces don't have the same quality like their classic pieces. Let me know what you think. Do you think this is just a speculation or is it actually the case? Either way, I suggest to take a very close look at the craftsmanship and the material to make sure that the item is actually worth the money because I think it's so easy to get distracted by the brand's name and assume that anything with that logo on must have a certain standard and that is worth paying for. The next one is quite a universal benchmark if you want to judge if an item is worth your money and that is how much would you use it. Being quite a practical person myself, I always think it's worth it to pay more if it means you'll use the item a lot more. I mean, isn't that the whole point of buying something in the first place? I always use the cashmere example because I feel like we've all been there. You see, buying a cashmere jumper for $100 might seem really wasteful, especially when you can buy an acrylic jumper with a very similar design for $20. But then you realize you hate wearing the acrylic jumper because it always makes you sweaty and itchy. So in this case, the $20 might well be a complete waste of money, whereas the $100 is worth every penny. So essentially, spending more on the right pieces means you will have a much lower cost per wear in the long run. This is why I think it's worth it to invest in fine jewelry, especially those simple everyday pieces, because I can wear them all the time, even in the shower or in the rain. That being said, paying more doesn't always mean you use it more. Sometimes when an item reaches a certain price point, we start getting protective about it and then we start worrying if the item will get any scratches, we don't want to wear in the rain, or we might think the item is too flashy for us to wear day to day. For me, it kind of defeats the purpose if I don't feel like putting the item to use and it's also a waste of money. Next is resale value. This is especially applicable to luxury items. I know some people will say, I buy what I like, I don't care about resale value, but I think we shouldn't ignore this aspect altogether. When I started buying luxury items, I was basically buying whatever I liked without doing my own due diligence. And then when I realized I wasn't using a lot of the pieces I bought, I tried to sell them only to realize the resale values of certain pieces were quite poor. For example, Dior and Celine have some really beautiful pieces and their quality is amazing, but for some reason, they just don't do very well on the secondhand market. This was especially frustrating frustrating for me because I knew I bought a lot of those pieces very mindlessly. The Dior, for example, was a complete impulse purchase and when I sold it, it was in excellent condition, but I lost out on so much money. That being said, I don't think resale value should be the only thing we consider when we buy something because if you zero in on this one aspect, you will end up buying things that you don't enjoy using. For example, I bought several Chanel bags simply because they were Chanel and I was under the impression that they were a good investment. So resale value certainly shouldn't be the only reason you buy something, but it can be helpful to take it into consideration. So let's say if I like two items equally, I might go for the one with a much better resale value. 
Other times, I might prefer the one with a less promising resale prospect if I think the item is the perfect fit for my wardrobe and that I would definitely put it to good use. Because in that case, I might never have to sell it anyway. Besides, if you've decided that something is worth your money, why not check out the secondhand website to see if you can maximize the value of your money even more. I want to address the aspect of price increases because luxury prices are going through the roof. A Chanel Jumbo is now about £10,000. The last time I thought about buying one, it was about two and a half thousand. So it's really hard for me to even register the current price tag. At this point, I feel like if you have a Chanel bag on your wish list and you're in the right position to buy it, then maybe you should make the purchase now because it's not getting any cheaper. But I wouldn't suggest you to buy it just because of the price increase unless if you happen to have a resale business. For me as a consumer, the price point doesn't make sense anymore and I can't say it's worth my money but let me know what you think. And there you are. Those are the things I routinely consider when I make a purchase. To be honest, I'm now very intentional not just with expensive shopping. I'm actually very mindful even with the smallest purchases and it truly feels really good to be in control. Let me know if you have any other good tips to suggest. Thank you for being here. Take care and I will see you soon.